day I got a phone call from a young man who was interested in a black lacquer bedroom set I had to advertise. And at the same time, he said he had a limited budget of $700. I said, sure, come in and I'll be glad to work with you. Shortly after that phone call, a young guy walked in and on both arms he had the most gruesome tattoos I've ever seen. I was really in shock to see such a thing, but he identified himself that I'd spoke to somebody about a black lacquer bedroom set. So I proceeded for about the next hour to walk around the store. We picked out merchandise. My father, seeing all his hateful tattoos, kept ignoring them and really went out of his way to uh, assist and make sure he stayed under his budget. We came to the sales counter and as he was watching me write up the receipt, he noticed that I was obviously giving him a discount. The, the original ticket came to over $900. I discounted it down to the $700 we agreed on. It was, uh, you know, amazement to this customer how my father went out of his way to really pay attention to his budget and, and keep him under that and still give him amazing service as if he was spending, you know, thousands. He paid me and then we proceeded to load his truck. It was a hot summer day. We both worked up a little bit of a sweat. My father offered him a Coke and said, hey, sit down, cool off a little bit. And they started chatting a little bit and, and, and having a conversation. Of course, I, I couldn't hold my curiosity longer, and I said to him, I can't help but notice your tattoos. I go, you really don't believe in that stuff, do you? He goes, well, yes, I do. He proceeded to tell me he and his cohorts have done a lot of bad things to people of color and just to Jewish people, and that Jews are liars and thieves and, you know, bad people. And about that time, I decided to take off my cap, and I shared with him, well, I'm Jewish. He says, well, you're not a real Jew. And I said, yeah, I'm a real Jew. I live as a Jew. And he said, but you were so nice to me. And he said, you gave me a discount. And I said, well, the Torah teaches us that that's how we treat people. And I said, even though that I saw your tattoos and, and I was like in shock, but inside I, I knew, I knew that I had to treat you properly, so I did. But I want you to know that nothing's good that's gonna happen with this. You're either gonna be shot and killed or you're gonna be sent to prison. I don't see anything happy coming from the behavior that you're being part of. Well, he got up and he left and I figured I'd never see him again and I just hoped and prayed that he would have listened to my words and that he would get away from the life he was living. About a year later, the same man came in, only this time he was wearing a, a long sleeve shirt and he was dressed and professional looking. Right away he says to my dad, hey, you know, do you recognize me? And my dad said, well, of course I, I recognize you. You're a face I'm, I'm never gonna forget, you know, after our meeting last year. And he said, well, I came in today to give you an apology. I said, why are you giving me an apology? He says, I now realize how repulsive my tattoos are. I will always keep them covered unless I can have them removed someday. He gave me a hug and he was very emotional. And he, t he told me that, that obviously I had changed his life. A scenario where this person threw a, just a, a good conversation with my dad and showing him true yid, a true Jew behaves, was able to really change his mind about how he thinks about Jews and how he takes his own life into consideration. As I reflect, I realize that had I not been able to, to put my personal feelings aside and realize that even though he didn't know I was a Jew, but as a Jew, we're taught we have to behave a certain way and live a certain way. I, I'm very thankful that Rabbi Shalom gave me the strength and the ability to do that. Uh, I had no idea that it would change his life. With the Shem's blessings, it ended up being a happy ending.